Welcome to this demonstration of Cohesity's Data Protect Application Aware Services for Microsoft SQL Server. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the simple procedures for protecting and recovering a virtualized instance of SQL Server that is hosted on Virtual SAN as the primary storage platform. The configuration process to protect SQL servers and its databases is a very simple and intuitive process from the Cohesity perspective. I'll start by identifying the virtualized instance of the SQL server that I will be using in this particular demonstration. And I'll do that by identifying it through the vSphere web client. And then I will proceed to the Cohesity cluster management UI, where I will then define the actual protection and recovery settings. Cohesity provides data protection operations for both virtual machines as well as individual applications. And in this particular case is Microsoft SQL Server. Now, the fact that this is a native built-in capability uh, in terms of providing application awareness, it is not tied to any particular virtualization layer. And therefore, these capabilities can be utilized to protect physical instances of SQL Server as well. In this scenario, the virtual machine hosting the SQL Server instance is already being protected as part of another protection job. Now, the goal here is to set up the individual protection operations for the SQL Server application itself. I'll start the configuration procedure by identifying the virtual machine running the instance of SQL Server that I want to protect. Once the virtual machine is identified, I can register that particular instance of SQL Server as a source for protection to Cohesity's Data Protect. Here I provide the necessary Windows credentials to automatically deploy and install the necessary agents for the application. Once this is completed, I'll be able to proceed with the creation of the new SQL protection job. The creation of the protection job is quite simple. From the protection jobs menu, select protection jobs. Then click on add protection job. Here, you choose the type of protection job you want to create. In this particular case, it's SQL Server. Now I can search and identify the virtual machine that's hosting the SQL Server instance as I identified it in the vSphere web client. Notice that after the SQL Server application registration, the application is now uniquely identified as a source of protection running in that virtual machine by the SQL icon next to it. Now as part of the creation of the protection job, I have to select one of the available policies uh, within the system if one is available, or if not, create a policy that I want this particular job to adhere to that obviously has the adequate configuration settings that I'm looking for. So in this case, I'll be able to select the creation of the snapshots and the frequencies where I want it to be daily, hourly, minutes. Um, those are the selections that I'll be able to identify. Also the retention in terms of how long I want to keep that particular snapshot available. I can also select the frequency in which the both the snapshots for the database and the logs are retained and also make a decision to how often will I want to perform full SQL backups without CBT. And lastly, I get an opportunity to identify the priority of the particular job, whether it's medium, high, or low. And after that, create the actual policy. Once the policy is applied, the job is fully created and it's ready to go so that now I can proceed and create the particular job that I want for the SQL Server. Here, I provide a, a descriptive name, and you can see now the job is gonna be created, and at this point, I've created a job with a backing policy that is now available to be executed within the system. If I want to identify the different jobs, obviously this particular job, I can very easily from the UI select the type of job I'm looking for. Here, I by simply clicking the SQL type of jobs, I can identify there's one job that has been uh, clearly um, uh, now created uh, and it's actually now running. And we can see the progress of this particular job running uh, directly and live within the Cohesity Cluster Management UI. So now let me demonstrate a recovery process for a SQL database by going into the virtual machine that is currently running the SQL Server instance. Uh, I'm going to go directly into the SQL Manager, uh, SQL Server Management Studio, 
and make some modifications. Uh, I'm going to look at some uh, a particular database here, the demo database, uh, where I will purposely delete some of the critical data components that are part of that database. I will delete a couple of entries, uh, and I will also, just to make things a little bit more uh, dramatic and more meaningful, uh, I'll even uh, proceed and delete uh, an entire table so we can see the recovery process be more meaningful. So now that I have deleted some of the data, uh, let me create a recovery job to specifically restore the database and not the virtual machine. So from the Cohesity Cluster Management UI, I can very quickly uh, click over and choose what type of recovery I want to perform, as you can see there. I can quickly search for the database I want to recover, do it based on the database name. Once the database object is visible, I can uh, click on the actual object and look at the available restore options. Uh, here I will select a specific point in time to recover uh, the database, then process that particular recovery operation. Now, once the recovery task has been initiated, I can browse and take a look at the status of the task to see where everything currently stands. Now, because this is a SQL server recovery uh, and not a virtual machine recovery, uh, I can take a look at the subtasks that are part of that particular job to see what's going on inside the Windows server uh, and all, as all the SQL and Microsoft uh, Windows server uh, sort of related functions are being performed as part of the recovery job. As I browse through the different subtasks, you can see here uh, the status of the database directly within the Cohesity uh, Cluster Management UI uh, as it's been uh, as as the processes are taking place as they are being restored. Uh, this recovery process is completely traceable uh, in terms of details, and everything can actually be pulled and directly within the UI. Now, once the restore job is completed, I can go back into the virtual machine and look at the SQL Server Management Studio to verify that the data which I purposely deleted has been now successfully restored and is available within the database. Now, to further validate the successful recovery of the data, I can also take a look at the SQL Server logs within the SQL Server Management Studio where I will be able to see the individual tasks and actions that were performed uh, just as they were presented uh, to the Cohesity Cluster Management UI uh, when I was looking at the actual job uh, directly there. So it's, it's a pretty simple, pretty quick, uh, a very traceable a function instead of operations to recover and protect uh, databases, particularly when it comes to SQL databases, from within the Cohesity platform while leveraging the data platform or data protect application aware services for Microsoft SQL Server. I hope you find this demonstration useful and enjoyed it. Uh, thank you for watching.